Well, LSU has so much momentum following that massive blowout win against Mississippi State on the road last week. So how do they keep the momentum going against Arkansas at home on Saturday? You are Locked On LSU, your daily podcast on the LSU Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, thank you for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also check us out on YouTube as well, Locked on LSU. My name is Caroline Fenton, and I am your host, as I am every single day. And hey, today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50-plus infections. So get yours today at jacemedical.com. That is J-A-S-E medical.com. Well, let's get into it because we are just a couple days away from LSU hosting the Arkansas Razorbacks on Saturday. And look, Arkansas, they're down bad after a loss against BYU last week. And we will visit with John Neighbors, the host of Locked On Razorbacks. What went wrong for the Arkansas Razorbacks last week? What are their strengths? What are their weaknesses? And how can LSU get a win? Well, welcome into the Locked On LSU and Locked On Razorback podcast. I'm Caroline Fenton. He is John Neighbors. We've got a big game in Tiger Stadium coming up this weekend. Arkansas coming into town. Want to do a little bit of the state of the fan base, state of the team. But, John, I have a question for you. How last week against BYU, BYU put up, what, 280 yards of offense and 38 points? I make it make sense to me. Like what went down last weekend? What went wrong for Arkansas? Well, let me introduce you to Arkansas Razorback sports. Mm -hmm. That's the type of things that just happen so often. It's so much fun. And it's almost like a tale as old as time, things like that Uh, happening. But honestly, for for that particular game against BYU, it was it it was just one of those things to where you needed certain things to go your way to win. And you would have won easily. You would have won in a a reasonable way. But over that whole span of that game, you just had weird things happening. Mm -hmm. You had a 10-yard punt and also a 28-yard punt. You had a – What? Yeah, like stuff like that. That's that's just like – How does that even happen? Well, trust me. Like I think I could probably punt at 10 yards. I I don't know how how far I could get it in general, but I think I could do 10 yards myself. But you had that happen. You You had uh, a strip fumble. Sack. You had an interception thrown by KJ, who hadn't thrown one all year long. Uh, you had some crucial penalties. Because Arts had, I think, 14, 15 penalties in this game, which is absurd. Uh, and I think almost all of them are on the offensive line. Like everything that could have just like gone against Arkansas in this win. I'm not saying that it's not their own fault because it is, but it it just BYU was able to make those plays and to to get out of there. Like Arkansas had more offense. I think the defense played really well. And you just look at the score and like this doesn't add up. This doesn't make sense. Well, if you watch the game and knowing how short a field BYU had so many times, then I think it probably does make sense. Interesting. Interesting. So just going into this game against against LSU, what have you seen so far through three weeks that you're like, if this position group, this player, this, you know, this coordinating doesn't get better, then we're not going to win very many games. Like what is the number one focus right now that needs to improve? Uh, the one thing that you would have thought under Sam Pittman would always be good, and that's the offensive line. Offensive line. It's weird. Yeah. It is very weird why there's not a solid offensive line under Sam Pittman, and that's been the problem this year. Uh, not to say it's all on them, but they've been dealing with some injuries. The depth's not there. Danny Nuss is a new offensive coordinator I really like and had success, but he does kind of have a more complicated offense to run than what Kendall Browns had the year before, and I think that people are trying to – play catch up on that but uh, without question like the defense is vastly improved uh the d line's really good secondary has been solid um you know wide receivers have been looking pretty good T- tight ends have been improved dramatically i know they haven't had rocket sanders but the running backs have done an all right job it's just like none of that matters though if you don't have an offensive line and i think that's the thing that's kind of like been weird it's just that's not a Sam Pittman team not having a good offensive line. That, that now that does not make sense. See Sam Pittman to me is like the human representation of offensive lines. 
Like he's just, you know, he's tough. He's gritty. He's just, he just, when you think of an offensive lineman, I just think of Sam Pittman, but you know, the offense not being able to deliver, it's frustrating. And especially when you have a quarterback like KJ Jefferson yeah. you know, going into the season, I thought KJ was one of the best, if not the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Yeah. And I, I felt the same way and I still think he can be, but Sam Pittman actually relieved or uh, re- revealed earlier this week that KJ went into the BYU game a little bit banged up. He didn't go into specifics. So I was like, well, that matters. You know, that's something that could be a difference maker. Um, but yeah, it, it's just been weird. It's it, like what I thought, the reasons I thought Arkansas, if you told me they were going to be two and one and losing the BYU heading into the LSU game, I would have come up with pretty much the opposite reasons as why. Like, yeah. I would have thought, ah, eh, the defense still sucks. Or, ah, the, uh, uh, the, the play calling's not good. Or, you know, like any sort of issue like that. But to see it be the one thing I thought you could count on And I think everybody thought they didn't count on just that's uh, it's a mind blowing thing. And that's why nobody feels good about going into LSU this weekend whatsoever into Baton Rouge. I get it. I understand. I understand. And, you know, before we get into the LSU set of things, just like overall overarching Arkansas question, what's the fan base? Like, what do they feel about Sam Pittman now? Because I love Sam Pittman. And I think that the fan base loves Sam Pittman as well, but you can't be winning you know, excuse me, losing games to BYU in your four. Yeah, that's, I think that's kind of how everyone's viewing it. It's like, yeah, Mo, I mean, everyone's going to be irrational. There's some people that have gone on and said, Hunter, your check, drop the ball when they hired Sam Pittman. I'm like, okay, relax. Okay, yeah. like chill out. Uh, but I think the most, or at least the majority of the fans are kind of like, hey, this shouldn't have been happening. Like, this was a game, I'm not saying, oh, you can guarantee any win, but mm-hmm. it's a game that everyone marked as a W at yeah. home against BYU. Like, They're a good team. Yeah. Yeah, they're a good team, but you, you have to win these games. And, you know, Arkansas' schedule, like, they're going to be gone from the state of Arkansas for a month. Like, from now until the next four weeks, they're gone. They're not having a home game. So, it's like you had to win these home games. So, I think yeah, everyone – Who is making these schedules? I mean, uh, you don't play at home until Halloween. Uh, I don't know. Chad Morris, I think, is probably making, like, the schedule. All, it's always Chad Morris, isn't it? Anything bad in Arkansas, it's always Chad Morris. That's that's kind of the whole, uh, the whole thing. But, yeah, I mean, I, somebody – it just hates Arkansas. I know that they had that game in a- against a and Arlington, so it's technically a home game for Arkansas, but it's not. It's not. So it's just because they wear the red jerseys. But, uh, like, I, I don't know. It, it's terrible. So it's like, if you don't – if you – like, you're staring right now at possibly starting the year two and five. Like, this is a tough stretch. You got LSU this weekend, A&M, at Ole Miss, and at Bama. Like, that's, that's your four games. So I think people are still hopeful, but – you got to give them some reason to be hopeful right now. And there's just not really any reason to believe Arkansas is going to do well in the SEC right now. And that's the positive thing is it's only week four. You know, there's a whole lot of season left to be played. There are a lot of games left to be played. There's a lot of football that's left to be improved. And I think that's kind of the angle looking at the LSU side of things of, yeah, you won a game at Mississippi State at 11 a.m., a game time that LSU just frankly is not very familiar with on the road in a, in the SEC West, and you absolutely dominated them. But also, it's early, and you have a lot of games left to play, and you know you don't get crowned anything or you know, make a plaque for beating Mississippi State in week three of the season. Um, so it's just kind of tempering expectations and taking things for how you see it. Of, look, like this, this defense is improving. The defense looks much better you know, in week three than it did week one against Florida State. Jaden Daniels and Malik Neighbors. Hey, heads up. It's like a, a really good chemistry and really good connection between the two, almost 300 yards between the two on Saturday against Mississippi State. But also, your offense needs to keep evolving, especially when the injuries start racking up. Yeah, I, the LSU team, it's like I keep wondering about, like, who's actually good, like, in this conference. Um, yep. But it's still early to tell. And LSU, the Florida State game, I think, just when it happened and seeing the reaction from a lot of LSU fans and how mad they were, I was a little concerned, even not that I care about LSU in that way, but I was just hey, like concerned you care about us. Don't you? Yeah. I care about the golden boot. It's, it's the best trophy in all of the land. It's the biggest rivalry in all of college football. Um, obviously, but yeah. yeah, it was like, when I saw that though, it, like the only thing that concerned me about LSU was like, it looked like at the end of the game, they just kind of gave up and that, that they just may have been wrong about that, but it just seemed like they stopped tackling. They stopped caring. And I was like, Oh man, that could be pretty bad. But Going out and doing what they did against Mississippi State, uh, I'm sure that it changed some, maybe some people's minds, but still it's a wait and see. But it's still LSU. It's, it's still a really good team. It's still going to be in Baton Rouge. It's still going to be at 6 p.m. And so 
I think Razorback fans are adding nightmares about Perkins still to this day from what he did last year. So I that was the Herald game. Yeah. I mean, like, he single handedly won in, in ugly game in Fayetteville yeah. last year. Yeah. And well, speaking of that, speaking of that, like I didn't realize this until today, and I'm sure you did already too. But like the past three times these three team, these two teams have met, the final score has been three points difference. Yeah, like, like it's been a low good. scoring for the most part and very close game. Like Arkansas gave up like 80 million points to like Missouri State last year, but yet they held LSU to 13. Like I, I don't know what to expect out of this game, but it's just been weird that it's been three straight years now where. It's been a three-point game. I, it doesn't make any sense. I think the difference is when it's being played. Because LSU-Arkansas being in September is something that's completely foreign. Like, normally this is mid, no early to mid-November. And if it's played in Fayetteville, it's probably cold outside. LSU players don't do very well with it, uh, with being cold outside. You know, last year, a lot of injuries. Um, the flu was going around the team as well. So I think at that point in the season, you know, LSU, I mean, Arkansas is the same way. I mean, both of these teams are going to be banged up. You've already gone through a majority of the gauntlet of your schedule. Um, you're just trying to creep into the final few weeks of the season, and that's going to lead itself into either a close game or a low-scoring game or or both. Um, but coming up next, I want to get into some matchups to watch on Saturday in Tiger Stadium. We'll get into that on the other side. I want to tell you about Jace Medical's Jace case. So when I was at home, I, you know, I was living in Connecticut at the time during COVID in 2020, and I decided to move home with my parents. I thought there's no need for me to be here alone in this apartment. I will go home and spend time with my family. But being at home, I didn't have access to my primary care physician. So I was left without antibiotics in case I got sick. My family was left without antibiotics since there was so much uncertainty surrounding the COVID pandemic. So that's where the Jace case really would have helped us. So the Jace case provides five different antibiotics that can help treat 50 plus different infections. So let's say, for example, you are on vacation or maybe you're away from an urgent care or your primary care physician. Let's say you got a sinus infection. Maybe your doctor is out of town and there's no way that you can get appointment for days. Well, the Jace case will have exactly what you need in order to treat that sinus infection or any other, you know, very common infection that might come across in day-to-day -day life. J Jace Medical has worked for me and Jace Medical can work for you too. Jace Medical is super simple. Just go online, fill out a form, and then you get a prescription with life-saving medications right to your doorstep. The Jace case gives you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical, Jace Medical Make sure that you have the medication in hand. So don't wait until the last second when you actually need it. Come prepared. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using my code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That is J-A-S-E medical.com. College football season is here, and this season Locked On is kicking up our coverage with Locked On College Football Kickoff Live. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 a.m. to noon Central on every Locked On College YouTube channel, including this one, including on Locked On LSU. So that'll go live tomorrow morning. College Football Kickoff Live will cover playoff implications, the conference rivalry games and go in depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts covering their team every single day. So find Locked On College Football Kickoff Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern. Again, that's 10 a.m. to noon local Baton Rouge time on any Locked On College YouTube channel, including Locked On LSU. You will not want to miss it. Well, thanks again for making the Locked On LSU and Locked On Razorback podcast your first listen every single day. Caroline Fenton of Locked On LSU and John Neighbors of Locked On Razorbacks. For your opinion, from the Arkansas side of things, what matchups are you excited to watch on Saturday? Well, it's obviously kind of uh, nightmarish when you think about Arkansas's offensive lineman bad, and then you talk about the Perkins game last year. Like That's not that white case, but I am very interested, though, and seeing how Arkansas's defense, and especially defensive front, goes up against LSU's offensive front, but Jaden Daniels mainly, just because 
you know, he, he's so dynamic and he has a, a lot of ways of beating you. He had a great game against Mississippi State last weekend. I think it was like, what, complete the first 12 passes, something crazy like that. Yeah. So he's, he's a really good player. And I think Arkansas this year, even though they lost to BYU, they've held the quarterbacks in pretty good check. Now, they haven't faced a Jaden Daniels yet, mm -hmm. but this is going to be that test of Arkansas has a really athletic defensive line, defensive ends, Landon Jackson, someone you no know, LSU fans are familiar you know with. very him. well. Yeah, he's, he's really done a good job. Uh, I think Trajan Jeffcoat, the transfer from Missouri, has done really good. Uh, the linebackers are a lot more impressive and more athletic. So to me, that that's kind of the matchup I'm looking at is just how Arkansas defense, and especially the D-line, are they going to keep – the pressure on Jaden Daniels. Can they be able to contain him a little bit? Because if you don't get any pressure on him and he ends up running around, it's going to be problematic. It's going to be a long day. That's what was very puzzling about the Mississippi State game last week was uh, they didn't blitz Jaden Daniels ever. Like there was never pressure on Jaden Daniels. He had all day in the pocket to throw, which I think lend itself to, you know, 250 yard game from a league neighbor and putting up 41 points, converting on a fourth and seven into the end zone. Um, so that will be interesting to see, you know, can the offensive line one hold up against the, that Arkansas defensive line? Because I do think that that is an underratedly good front in the SEC as Arkansas's defensive line. And you know, we saw the offensive line struggle against Florida State's defensive line. And we talk a lot about how LSU kind of fizzled out in the really just the fourth quarter, like the second half against Florida State. But really all game long, the offensive line struggled to create holes for, for the run game, for the majority of the game against Florida State. So I am intrigued to see a front that knows that it wants to play, you know, brick wall defensive line up at the front, want to stop the run, want to stop what Jaden Daniels can do. Because frankly, Mississippi State just didn't do that. Um, but I think on the LSU side of things, you know, you talk about a bad offensive line. And I think that a lot of LSU fans are just salivating, thinking about, Mason Smith coming back and having a couple of games under his belt and still building up to 100% strength. Harold Perkins being put back where he needs to be, which is wherever the hell he wants to be, not at inside linebacker. I think about Makai Wingo, how, who has been absolutely fantastic. Savion Jones, the same way. Um, so I think about this LSU defensive line that maybe some people counted out after that game against Florida state. And I think it was a reminder against Mississippi state, like, Oh no, 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 no. Like this defensive line is really good. Um, so I'm excited to see how, what kind of pressure they can get on KJ Jefferson and try and limit what KJ can do. But I think this is a different KJ. I mean, just from your perspective, you know, I have seen a KJ Jefferson that can throw the football much better than maybe the KJ of a couple of years ago. Just your perspective on kind of where he's at. I mean, I think so. Like it is, it's just a different offense that he's having to run. He's standing in the pocket a lot more and having to go through his reads. And it's a good thing because I think that's needed. You know, if he wants to take it to the next step and have a good career in the NFL, it's like those are the things you have to do. But when you've run the Kendall Brawls offense for three straight years where it's it's a different type of thing, you're having to have quick, fast passes, getting it out of your hands quick and thinking quick. Uh, you know, it's it's not that it's bad, but it's just still concerning because that's what KJ does. KJ is really great at improvising. KJ is really good yeah. at uh, getting out of tackles and finding a throw. Like it, it's he's good at that. But you know, how good is he when he just has to stand in the pocket and deliver a pass and and go through reads? It's still it's fine. It hasn't been terrible, but it's just not been I think what people have been hoping for because Arkansas has some good wide receivers. Like they, Isaac Tesla has been great. And they have tight ends that because uh, they never utilize the tight ends they are now. I think that's helping him, but it's just, it feels like KJ still maybe thinking too much when you need him to just be KJ and hey, yeah. go with your instinct, go with your feeling. And if, if LSU is going to get after KJ in this game, it's going to be bad. It, it's going to be really bad for Arkansas, but maybe they, if they go into the game plan, maybe just try to get out of his hands quicker. Maybe you get rocket Sanders back. Still don't know the state status on him, but Somebody that can help him out and be able to alleviate some of the pressure uh, will be helpful because there's no reason to believe that Arkansas's offensive line is going to match up very well against the D-line of LSU. What is the latest on Rocket? Well, at the time of this recording, at least, it's that he is – they're going to see. They're they're waiting to see this week. That That's all they put out there. They're going to go through some practices and go through some uh, different drills and whatnot, and then they'll see. So Sam Pittman keeps – Injuries very close to the chest. In fact, mm -hmm. the only reason he even mentioned KJ going into the game 
little banged up last weekend is because somebody directly asked him in the press conference, was KJ okay? Was he unhealthy? Did, did he have issues? And so he kind of like sat there. He's like, can't lie. So I got to say it. So I think he's probably just doing a little bit of gamesmanship. I yeah. think if I'm going with my gut instinct, I think he plays this weekend. But uh, there's nothing confirmed on that. And it, it'd be nice to have him back because I hear he's pretty good. Yeah. I would say so. And I said going into the season, I thought the Rocket and KJ were the best quarterback running back duo in the SEC. But just it sounds kind of like there's a little bit of taking away Superman's cape with KJ. Like just taking away what he does best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's I get why they are having to make adjustments why they are because the offensive line's struggling and you know, you're you're trying to run your offense the way it is. And Sam Pittman even mentioned how it's a little bit more complicated with the players trying to get the Enos offense than it was under Bronos, which mm -hmm. could be a good thing and a bad thing. But uh, I, I just want to see KJ just improvise. You know, I want to see him yeah. do a little Johnny Manziel type thing. Just get the ball and then go with what your gut feeling is. Cause usually that works out for him and usually it works out for Arkansas and he's a tank. So if he like starts running, he's 250 pounds. He's huge. He's not, yeah. He's not easy to get down. So you know, maybe get him involved more so if, you know, if he doesn't have his reads or whatever, just have him take off running. So uh, that's that's to me of like why it's going to be such a big deal against LSU. He didn't get to play against LSU last year, mm -hmm. you know, and then the year before he played decently but didn't have his best game and he didn't play against LSU the year before. So this is really the first crack he's going to have of saying, all right, well, this is your last time to play LSU on the road, night games, you know, Baton Rouge, show something because it's not going to get, this is probably the toughest game Arkansas has got left on their schedule, I think. And it'd be nice for him to really showcase that because he hasn't really done it against LSU yet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm sure a career thing that KJ wants, you know, before his time in the SEC West is over. Uh, but that is one thing that, uh, you know, when KJ jets off, I don't have that same feeling of, oh, gosh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. You know, don't hit him because he's fragile because KJ is a freaking tank. That mm -hmm. is what concerns me about, about, uh, about Jaden Daniels. He's put on a lot of weight since last year like he looks different he looks bigger he looks stronger but it's still like like if there was one play against florida state you probably saw it and he like jumped up over the defensive line and just gets like kerplunked onto the ground i'm like Jaden, what are we doing you know we're yeah. not we we are not 250 pounds <laughs> yeah well see even kj like last year he was hurt like a lot of the season and so i mean it was killer against lsu last year because they like Malik Hornsby was a quarterback and they switched in Kate Ford. I was like, man, this, this ain't good. This is not, not the same. So they, they got to keep KJ healthy too. Even as big as he is, he can only do so much and only take so many hits, but yeah, yeah you got to keep, got to keep him upright. Got to keep him healthy. This game. Our official predictions coming up next. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there is no better time to get in on the action. The app, first of all, is super easy to use. It is so user-friendly. I've gone on some apps that you can't find what you want and it's difficult to search. No, the FanDuel Sportsbook app is so easy to use. Plus, you can bet on a bunch of different things. You can bet on the spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. On the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now, LSU is a 17.5 point favorite at home to Arkansas. I am taking the Tigers. Arkansas is coming off of a rough loss. That offensive line looks shaky. Rocket Sanders is kind of up in the air. Not quite sure the, the situation with Arkansas's number one running back. So I like the Tigers to win big, especially coming off that big win against Mississippi State. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Well, thanks again for making the Locked On LSU and Locked On Razorback podcast your first listen every single day. Razorbacks coming into Tiger Stadium this weekend. John, your official prediction. Uh, well, as much as I'd love to see the uh, Razorback faithful go run across the field and get that golden boot that's so beautiful. and It that's is awfully so beautiful. So important to the LSU faithful, I know. Um, well, we've, been, uh, we've been talking about it all offseason. Yeah, I bet. I bet that's the game everyone's been circling. Uh, cause it's true rivalry, uh, that, but no, I listen, I, I think been. I think that Arkansas, uh, this is just not the, not the time when you want to be not playing your best and Arkansas is not playing their best. And so it's hard for me to say that Arkansas is going to go into Baton Rouge and win, just to be honest. I do believe though, that the spread 
thing is like when it opened, it was like 18 and a half. I was like, ah, it's a little high. So I think Arkansas loses in Baton Rouge. I think it's a closer game, just like the last three years have been, maybe even lower scoring. Mm -hmm. But I think LSU still wins by, I'm, I'll say, a final score of uh, 28 to 17, something to that extent where a couple touchdowns, a few touchdowns there, but Arkansas still keeps it relatively close, but LSU wins. Yeah, I look at this game, and I think that LSU needs to win by two touchdowns because I think that the, on a national scale, local and nationally, LSU was counted out a lot after that loss to Florida State. But I think it was really convenient for everyone to forget that LSU was leading at the half, that LSU put up 300 yards of offense in the first half, and they just had a really bad fourth quarter. And so, you know, everyone was talking about, you know, is LSU going to be a contender in the West? Can Brian Kelly get LSU back to Atlanta in, in year two? And I think that last week we saw like, okay, this is a good team. This is a team with a lot of talent. And as long as they go in to any game with a solid game plan offensively and defensively, I mean, they can beat anyone in this conference, especially how brutal this conference looks as a whole. So I think that this is another game for LSU to get right. Another game to for LSU to prove that, yeah, they are absolutely a contender in the West and in the SEC as a whole. I'll say final score. I'll say final score 35-14. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me anyway for that one too. I will ask though, if LSU was to lose this game. Yeah. Out of curiosity, what happens? Like, like how, how bad does it get if Arkansas beats LSU at night in this game? Riots in the streets? Like, is that dramatic? So. That'd be fun. Yeah, it would be serious panic button because it already was serious panic button after the Florida State loss. But I think that we could all come to terms with that after we realize just how freaking good Florida State is. And yes, the manner with which LSU lost that game, that was the biggest thing that hurt was I can live with losing to a good team. I can't live with completely giving up in the second half and getting blown out in the fourth quarter and having the final score look a lot worse than the game maybe indicated. I cannot live with that, mm. you know, cause that's, you know, that's a game that I could have gone either way on. This Arkansas game is a game that I think you know, no LSU fan has circled to say that's a question marker. That's an iffy one. That's a game that you need to win. You know, if let's say if you go to Bryant Denny and lose to Alabama, you know, I, I, can, I can live with that. And that's no disrespect to Arkansas. And that's no disrespect to Arkansas fans. This is just a, a game that LSU and where it's at in its program and the continuity that they have on this roster, the sheer talent that they have on this roster, it's an Arkansas team that they should beat. I hope you keep that energy because that's usually when Arkansas beats LSU is when those things happen, like in 07 and in yeah. you know, 2000 and uh, what was it, 15 down there. And hey, uh, crazy, crazier things have happened. Yeah. In, in this matchup in the SEC as a whole. So, you know, it's early. I think we're still trying to figure out which, you know, are each individual teams and just across the SEC that we're trying to figure out who are the true contenders and who are the teams that are kind of more so looking ahead to next year. So, I, I mean, maybe this is a defining game. Might be. I might be. I'm ho I'm hoping that there can be some, like, old magic because, again, even in the games that Arkansas lost down at LSU, a lot of them were close. I think mm -hmm. the only ones that weren't were, like, 2011 and 2019, but, like, felt like all the rest of them were one-possession games or game down to the wire. So, mm -hmm. good setup for a very entertaining game, but I don't think any Razorback fan worth their salt is going to say, oh, yeah, we got LSU. That's no problem. We got them. It's, it's over. We're going to win. But I who knows? I said uh, on Monday, you know, recapping the Mississippi State game, I said it is such – it is so refreshing to be able to sit down and watch an LSU game and not be, like, gnawing on my fingernails, like, to the to the nub, like, to not be stressed, to not have my heart rate be 150 miles an hour because LSU was playing a much closer than they need – game than they need to. Like, it was so nice to just sit back and enjoy a good game, a good win. Um, maybe my luck will run out this weekend. We, so we shall see. Certainly hope so. Certainly hope so. I certainly don't. Yeah. Well, I think everybody's got, uh, got their own opinion on it, but Hey, listen, if, if Arkansas loses this game, it's whatever, but if LSU loses this game, right, there's going to be a lot of issues and I'm going to be here for it completely. I love ruining LSU season. It's always fun. That's really nice of you to say. Of course. <laughs> John, where can the people find you? You can follow me on Twitter at Caroline Fenton one. Where can the people find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter, social media, Buzz John Neighbors as well. So uh, also locked on Razorbacks Rex podcast, wherever podcasts are found, and on YouTube as well. And uh, sure, uh, LSU fans will be tuning in uh, this week because 
There's going to be some good stuff going on over there, too. And I'm sure you won over a lot of LSU fans today. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for, just to win over the other fan bases that hate me. So yeah. it's great. It's great. Yeah. I just, I'm just I'm just glad they're accepting the greatest rivalry in college football, the Golden Boot. It is a yeah. uh, it's a fun job to be able to please everybody. That's, that's what we, we do. That's why we do it. Well, thanks again for making Locked in LSU your first listen every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU, we will have a full pregame breakdown. What does LSU need to do? And what does LSU need to avoid in order to secure a dub at home against Arkansas? All of that coming up on tomorrow's edition of Locked on LSU.